I, a 21-year-old female, have been married to my husband, a 22-year-old male, for four years. We got married right out of high school at 17 and 18 respectively and had a child a year later. Yes, we got married very young, but he was going active duty, so we felt it was the only option. Our daughter is now three. After having her, I experienced severe postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety on top of navigating how to be a new mom. My life felt like it was turned completely upside down. I needed help, but my husband felt like his only duty was to go to work, while mine was the baby in the house. While I understand some people like the traditional lifestyle, I would have at least liked help on the weekends or liked being able to shower more than once a week or every two weeks. When I was able to shower, I was given a 30 minute time limit so I would only have enough time to brush my matted, curly hair. He would tell our daughter, mommy doesn't love us because I needed to shower. I was so sleep deprived at one point, I was hallucinating. Needless to say, I grew very resentful. On top of that, every time we would argue, he would tell me he was gonna divorce me. He'd say he would leave me and our child, or sometimes he'd tell me that I was stupid to think I would actually get custody of her because I was jobless and didn't have a higher education while he did, I did his college for him. Unfortunately, a little over a year and a half ago, he was medically retired. He fell into a depression, reasonably so, and has isolated himself. I should have pushed harder to get him help, but when my attempts to help him were shut down, I stopped trying as much. As his wife, I should have tried harder but the resentment had grown to the point that I was so over everything. After he was medically retired, we moved to my small hometown so I could get help with our daughter from my family and go to college. A bit of backstory on my husband and my parents. From the beginning, my dad felt something was off about him, but my mom made an effort to try and build a relationship. My husband has always been super critical of my parents, but that is neither here nor there. After they saw how I was being treated for the first couple of years after having our daughter, they didn't like him. My mom still tried to make conversation and see if he needed anything, but my dad didn't talk to him unless he was talked to. There have been boundaries ignored and crossed by my parents when it comes to our daughter, so my parents aren't perfect. There have been things said about my husband by my parents that are not acceptable, and I defended him strongly for a long time. But after everything that's happened, I stop trying as hard and I take full responsibility for that. I regret it and know I should have done more and should have done better. I've seen how it's affected him and I am very regretful. If I could go back and be better, I would. All of this to say I've messed up too and I don't blame him for how he feels about it all. He has been losing weight over the past six months and no matter what I do, he won't eat what I make him. I prepare food and he says he's not hungry. I ask him over and over what he wants to eat so I can make him something he'll eat. And after it's made, he says he's not hungry. I've told him to go to the doctor about it, but he never did. We got into an argument a few weeks ago about how upset he was that I don't cook him balanced, home-cooked meals. At the time, I was in certified nursing assistant class from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And when asked why he didn't cook, he said that's not his job. He mentioned something about women empowerment, and then when I told him he was upsetting me, he told me he would divorce me and see our daughter a couple of months in the summer from now on. That was my breaking point, and I told him, okay, let's get a divorce. But then his whole tone changed. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you tearing our family apart? All I want is you. A divorce is the last thing I want, and so on. I just don't believe him. After all this time of telling me he's going to leave, I believe that's what he really wanted and that he was just with me because we had a child. After hearing he was going to leave so much, I became okay with the fact that he would eventually leave and I would have to do this by myself. The analogy I gave him was to imagine he had a shirt that he loved more than anything. He would make sure he wore it at least once a week and he loved the way it looked on him. But every time he wore it, I would tell him how ugly it was and how much I hated it and that he should never wear it again. Eventually, his favorite shirt would start becoming less so and he would probably stop wearing it at all. 
But imagine if he stopped wearing it after three years of hearing about how ugly it was, and I told him, why would you not wear it anymore? That was my favorite shirt of yours. It looks so good on you. He probably wouldn't believe me. How do I deal with this guilt that I have for walking away? I know he said it before, but now that it's happening, why do I feel so terrible? I feel like divorce is one of those things that should never be brought up unless you truly mean it. Am I wrong for walking away now when he's telling me he's ready to change and doesn't want a divorce? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Walk away. My ex did this, told me daily, you're worth nothing, I don't love you, let's divorce. Who would take on you and the kids? He would laugh in my face. When I did leave, he lost his mind, stalked me, broke into my new house, and got arrested for beating me because I would not go back to him. It's a control thing. Stay in line or I will divorce you. They don't think for one second you will leave. Comment 2. Don't feel guilty. He is hurtful and manipulative. He is responsible for his mental health. You are there to support him while he gets help for himself. You can't help someone who doesn't want to accept help and you are not supposed to take abuse from anyone. He has been hurtful from the beginning by giving you 30 minutes to shower and making sure you were overwhelmed with no help. Now, for the update. A week after I agreed to divorce my husband, I took my daughter Olivia to the grocery store. I was trying to keep things normal for her with everything going on, so we were doing our regular shopping. I was in the cereal aisle trying to keep Olivia from putting every sugary cereal in the cart when I heard someone call my name. I looked up to see Sarah, an old friend from high school. We talked a little about how she was doing, and she mentioned seeing my husband at the gym a few times. She said he looked different, like he was lost in thought or something. I kind of brushed it off because I was trying to stay focused on Olivia and not let her throw all the sugary cereal in the cart, but it did stick in my mind. My husband used to love working out and I knew he was going to the gym a lot after getting medically retired because he was trying to find a new job. I just never really asked about it because it was one of the few things he was doing that didn't make me resent him. That night at dinner, he was distant, like really distant, just staring at his food and not even talking to me or Olivia. A little background, he used to be the type to eat dinner with us and ask Olivia about her day. He would help her with her homework. He was just so present, and now it's like he was a ghost at the table. While I was trying to make conversation, Olivia accidentally spilled her juice. I mean, it happens. She's seven. But my husband snapped at her. I couldn't believe it. I reminded him to be patient with her, and he got up and stormed out of the room, leaving his dinner unfinished. I cleaned up the mess, and Olivia and I just sat there in silence. The next day, I decided to go to my parents' house. I really needed the distraction and some support. When I got there, my mom mentioned a recent family gathering where my husband acted really out of character. I was all ears at that point. She said he was rude and dismissive to family members. I just sat there listening, trying to figure out what was going on with him. That evening, I got a text from him asking to meet at a local diner to talk about our situation. I was surprised he wanted to talk. When I got there, he was already sitting at a booth, looking anxious. We talked about Olivia and how we're going to handle everything with her, but then he got a phone call. He said he had to take it outside. I couldn't help myself. He left his phone on the table and I glanced at it. There was an unfamiliar name flashing on the screen. I know, I know. I shouldn't have done it, but I listened in on his conversation. He was talking to someone about something and it sounded pretty heated. He came back into the diner, and I quickly pretended to be engrossed in the menu. We talked about boring stuff, but there was a lot of tension. The following week, I threw a small birthday party for Olivia. I invited family and a few close friends. My husband showed up late, looking messy and distracted. He barely interacted with the guests. I was left to handle everything while he just sat there doing nothing. After the party, I was cleaning up and found a small notebook that belonged to him. I flipped through it and it was full of notes expressing his frustrations about our marriage. And there were pages dedicated to a woman from his past. I was so mad. The next day, I confronted him about the notebook. I demanded an explanation. 
He denied it and said it was just a phase. He claimed he loved me. I knew I had to do something, so I asked my sister Kate to help me figure out what was going on. We came up with the plan to visit the gym where he was spending a lot of his time. We thought maybe we could get some insight into his routine or something. When we got there, we spotted him chatting closely with a woman. They were laughing and everything. My sister snapped a picture discreetly. Later, we went to a local coffee shop and I shared the photo with Kate. The next day, while my husband was home, Kate and I showed up unannounced. He looked totally shocked to see us and the atmosphere just changed. I showed him the photo and demanded an explanation. He stumbled over his words and couldn't deny the connection. The tension was just thick. He admitted to feeling lost and acknowledged his mistakes. I told him I needed a break from our marriage to figure things out. I just can't keep living like this. To answer a few questions, my husband and I went to couples therapy about a year ago, but it didn't go well. He didn't take it seriously, and I felt like I was the only one trying to make it work. We just stopped going after a few sessions. He's been dealing with a lot of mental health issues, but he refuses to see a therapist. As for the woman at the gym, he claims she was just a friend, but I doubt it. The conversations from the phone call also remain a mystery. Am I the idiot for telling my boyfriend his friend's house is a terrible place to raise our baby? So my boyfriend and I have been dating for about a year and some. I am currently pregnant, and that is a whole other story. This will be my first child. This will be his third with a third woman. I have mostly like 90% come to peace with all that. After all, it's his past and the kids are very amazing. Anyways, back on topic. He now wants to move in together in his friend's house who is moving away. He currently lives in a one living room, one kitchen, one bathroom studio, no bedroom, so we all share the same living space. Having a baby in that situation is probably ridiculous for many reasons. It would be unfair to the other kids hearing a baby crying all the time and not being able to get away. Unfair for the baby because it may cause excess stress on top of the already guaranteed stress of a newborn. And where will we even fit a crib? Also, the kids are getting older. One is turning 12 soon and she needs more of her own space. I love his kids and respect them as a step-parent. So he told me about this place like a week ago, and he's like, I want to do it. Let's do it, babe. I'm so down. And I'm like, well, can I see it first? He kind of threw a fit about that and was like, why? It's so perfect. Let's just do it. I explained that it's a big step for me. I can't just pay over $1,000. We'd split rent or he'd pay a little more and not see the place and get a vision of my family living there. After re-explaining why several times, he goes to his friend's house and finally sends me a video doing a house tour. By the way, where I live, big houses aren't a common thing like where I'm from. Places here are pretty expensive. It's a one-story, two-bedroom house, but it has everything we need and is bigger than the current place he's living in. I just honestly hate the location. It's more in the city, it's very hot over there, and the traffic and everything is terrible and it's loud. Those are my biggest concerns. I am a nature-loving girl, and I love being near green and nature. I hate the city, honestly, I'm sorry. So if I had to choose, I'd much rather live up the mountain or close to where he lives now. It rains way more, the weather is much cooler, and there are plants and trees that don't get baked in the sun and die like the new house he wants to live in. I tried explaining how I don't love the location, and he thinks it's because I don't understand struggle and that I judge him and everyone for struggling and that I've been spoiled my whole life. That's completely untrue. I grew up with dysfunctional teenage parents. I lived in many small, low-income homes. I lived right next to a busy train track and it would shake the whole house every time a train passed. I have shared an air mattress bed with four cousins every night. I don't need to defend myself and what I've gone through. I don't judge anyone for how they live I don't think I'm better than anyone. My mom came into money once I hit high school and has been doing well since then. She was a single teenage mom of two, by the way, so that's all he sees. Anyway, I don't judge how he lives, otherwise I would leave. I accept who he is. I live with him in his living room studio with two beds on the floor and his kids share a bed and we share a bed. 
I love him to death and don't care how he lives. How can he think this of me? He says, you just showed your true colors. I'm like, what did I say that's so bad? I have a vision of my life. Does that make me spoiled? I said I'd be willing to start there and live there under a one-year lease, but I cannot be stuck there forever. I want to raise my baby around nature, not the city. He says I just judge everyone who struggles and think I'm better than everyone. I cannot express how untrue that is, and it bothers me deeply that he views me this way. It honestly hurt me he said that, and now I'm questioning even having a baby with him. I feel sad now and confused. It's just a heated argument now. He isn't hearing me. Am I being selfish and not hearing him? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Your boyfriend is a selfish disaster. He wants it his way and his way only, and he's willing to say and do anything to make it happen, including saying awful things to you. You can leave him and live somewhere that matches your vision of life. Even if you have to split custody with him, you will be a thousand times happier for it. Comment 2. I wish you would be a little more selfish and look out for yourself and your poor baby. Third in a line of children with a father who has limited resources and apparently limited ability to pull out. You need your own place. This man will be an anchor around your waist for as long as you entertain him. Now, for the update. Two weeks after the argument, my boyfriend and I went to dinner with his kids to celebrate his youngest child's birthday. We went to this popular pizza place that's known for its arcade games. The kids love it. My boyfriend was super excited, trying to keep the kids entertained and happy, while I felt all the unresolved stuff between us. You know, the tension from the earlier argument. Not the fun kind of tension either. So during the party, guess who shows up out of nowhere? His ex-wife, with their kids. Like, how does she know we're here? It's a popular place, but come on. The mood completely changed when she came over to our table. She greeted everyone with this smile that felt fake. You could tell it was forced. It was like she was putting on a show. She made this big deal about being all friendly, inviting the kids to play games with her. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting there, feeling totally out of place. My boyfriend looked caught off guard, but he quickly went to join the kids, leaving me alone at the table. I felt like I was in a sitcom, but not the funny kind. As I sat there, I overheard his ex-wife making these comments about how her place was so much better for the kids than my boyfriend's new living situation. That was it. I got up to grab a drink, and on my way, I heard her telling the kids how lucky they were to have their own space. So condescending. When I returned to the table, I found my boyfriend and his ex-wife laughing together, reminiscing about their past. The kids seemed to enjoy her presence, and that just frustrated me even more. Like. Here I am feeling like a third wheel, and they're having a blast. After the party, my boyfriend drove me home. The silence in the car was so loud. Once we got home, I decided to confront him about the ex-wife's comments and how they affected the kids. I told him I was really worried about the mixed signals they were getting. To my surprise, he just dismissed my concerns, saying the ex-wife was just being nice for the kids' sake. Then he had the nerve to accuse me of being controlling, saying I should just trust him to handle things with his ex. We ended up having this heated argument outside our apartment, our voices getting louder and louder. I could see the neighbors peeking out from their doors. It was ridiculous. He stormed off, telling me I was overreacting and to figure things out on my own. After that, I felt so lost. I started researching family law and custody arrangements, wanting to understand the dynamics better. I even called a family consultant to get some info on co-parenting strategies. I knew I had to be prepared for whatever was coming. A few days later, I ran into the ex-wife at a local grocery store. She seemed surprised to see me and confronted me about my recent concerns regarding the kids. Instead of backing down, I stood my ground. I told her I was worried about the living situation and how it was affecting everyone. She got defensive and suggested that I was trying to replace her in the kids' lives. I calmly explained that my intention was to ensure a stable environment for everyone involved, not to take her place. Later that night, I shared my experience with my boyfriend, expecting him to be supportive. Instead, he accused me of making things worse and hurting the kids' feelings. Frustrated, I pulled out my research 
and showed him how our current situation was affecting the children. I think he felt cornered because he agreed to have a family meeting with the ex-wife to discuss living arrangements. At the meeting, the ex-wife brought up the idea of alternating weekends for the kids to have quality time at both homes. My boyfriend seemed hesitant but reluctantly agreed. Then the ex-wife subtly hinted that she was considering moving into a bigger place herself. I could feel my heart sink. This could complicate things even more. After that, I suggested that we all discuss the kids' needs moving forward. The ex-wife looked shocked but agreed, while my boyfriend appeared frustrated at the unexpected turn. I decided to create a detailed proposal for both families, focusing on the kids' best interests. I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I didn't want to keep feeling like the bad guy. Edit. The ex-wife and I had a productive conversation after the family meeting. She expressed her concerns about the kids adjusting to shared living spaces and agreed to discuss it further. My boyfriend's stance changed and he started emphasizing the need for stability for the kids. We are still in the process of finding a solution. Am I the idiot? for feeling pressured to say yes when my controlling boyfriend proposed in Paris. I've been with my boyfriend for two years. Before that, we dated for about two and a half years, called it quits, and then got back together. I have an 11-year-old daughter, and he has been an instrumental part of her life since she was very little. Overall, he is a fantastic partner and makes me feel loved and appreciated. However, there are issues based on insecurity and control. We always plan to get married. In two weeks, we are going to Europe, where I was born and raised, and it will be a very sentimental trip for me. We booked an Airbnb in a beautiful romantic city on the water. This weekend, everything blew up. My boyfriend had a very long work week and was tired and cranky. He kept apologizing for his attitude, and I told him it's completely okay and normal, and if anything, I expect him to feel irritable and tired after working so many hours. It was days of me brushing it off. Then my best friend, who I haven't seen in a while, came over. We all hung out, and I had a great time. We went on a walk, and I noticed my neighbor gets filtered water delivered. I made a comment that maybe I should look into it, and my boyfriend right away shut down the idea, saying that it's overpriced and I don't need that and to just trust him. Then on our walk, he made a remark pertaining to something else, and he said, You know I'm always right trust me. I felt a little embarrassed in front of my best friend because I thought that was an arrogant thing to say. What bothered me about the water situation is that I own my own place by myself. We don't live together. I pay my own bills. And I didn't like that my boyfriend gets to control what water I can buy. I sometimes feel like my boyfriend manages my life. The next morning, my boyfriend made a comment that my friend shouldn't have come over because he was tired and she stayed up late and I was sorry about the timing of everything. I felt bad canceling on my friend, and I genuinely was excited to see her, but I know he was tired and needed sleep. In all fairness, I did ask him if he had concerns with my friend coming over prior, and he said, do what you want, so I was caught off guard when he was upset in the morning. He told me that he thinks I'm annoyed with him and that he knows he's had an attitude from being tired. I told him that I wasn't bothered by it until the two comments yesterday, and I explained to him how it came off. He got very defensive and was raising his voice, yelling. I told him, I can't do this, pertaining to the petty fight. To which he responded, well, I was going to propose to you on our trip, but now I'm not. Hearing that really hurt me more than I initially realized. When we further talked about it, he said that he was going to ask me my ring size that day and also ask my parents for permission. I also didn't believe it because the timing just seemed too coincidental. He swore to me and showed me texts that he was planning to propose. What hurts me is that he told me he was going to propose and now I feel like I'm being punished for saying, I can't do this. He said it makes him feel like he can't fully trust me and that I will just leave the relationship at the drop of a hat. I've reassured his fears and concerns many times over the years. He admits that I'm a really great girlfriend and the best one he can ask for. I also feel sad that we're getting on the plane in two weeks, and he was going to order a ring online last second, 
making me feel not important enough to plan ahead and put thought and effort into the ring. He tried to talk about it and said he wants us to make a plan for our engagement and wants us to be excited and happy about it. I feel extremely vulnerable right now and hurt. I can't stop crying. I'm thinking over the whole relationship and now I'm not even sure if I want to spend the rest of my life with him. I feel let down and like I can't ever do anything right. Am I overacting by being hurt? How can I proceed after this? I don't see my boyfriend in the same light, maybe because it's still fresh. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, so he denied you having your friend over to your home that he's not living in? Why couldn't he go home to sleep it off? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So many red flags. He's an awful person at the very least and very controlling too. Proposing without having lived together is usually a bad idea too, if you ask me. Get rid of him altogether. Don't let your daughter grow up with a man controlling you. She will think that's normal. Comment two. I know that Reddit is really quick to make assumptions and jump on the breakup advice, but take it from a divorced 30 year old with only a few days of a happy marriage under her belt. They need to want to propose. They need to be dying to propose. On top of that, he's trying to control you before you're even together. I would run. Seriously, it isn't worth it. Now for the update. Hash update. My boyfriend proposed in Europe, but the spark just isn't there anymore. It's been about a month since we had the whole fight about him proposing on our trip to Europe. If you missed that, basically he was going to propose over there, and I was just so annoyed and sad that he didn't discuss the timing with me because now he was just doing it because he felt like he had to. I ended up going on the trip to Europe with him, which was a huge relief for him because I think he was scared I was going to bail. I had mixed feelings about it, honestly. I was excited to see the places my parents had always talked about and where I was born, but at the same time, I was just feeling so much dread because I knew he was going to propose and I just wasn't excited about it at all. He proposed in Paris at this beautiful spot with a view of the Eiffel Tower, which is super cliche, but whatever. When he got down on one knee, I just felt so awkward. He was grinning like an idiot and I just didn't feel any of the excitement that I think he was hoping for. I mean, I said yes because I felt like I had to, but it just felt so forced and awkward. I put the ring on, but I didn't even look at it because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I know it sounds terrible, but I just felt so much pressure to say yes. When we got home, he was all excited and wanted to talk about wedding plans, and I just felt so overwhelmed. I couldn't even wrap my head around the fact that I was engaged. We went to my parents' house for dinner, and they were all excited about the engagement. They even bought a bottle of champagne to toast the occasion. I just felt so overwhelmed because I was not really excited about the engagement and everyone else was just so happy. My dad even jokingly asked about wedding plans and I felt my stomach drop. I just didn't want to talk about any of that right now. And then my boyfriend jumped in with all these detailed ideas about the wedding and I just felt so sidelined. I wasn't even involved in this conversation and yet he was talking like it was a done deal. After dinner, I went to the kitchen to help my mom clean up. He followed me in there and was looking really annoyed because he wasn't getting any attention. He made this sarcastic comment about me being too caught up in my family to notice him and I just snapped at him. I told him he was being rude and we were at my parents' house. He stormed out of the kitchen and I felt so embarrassed because my parents were there and they could tell something was off. A couple of days later, we went to this birthday party for my daughter. She was all excited and everything looked so cute with the balloons and the unicorn cake, but the boyfriend just seemed so disengaged. He spent most of the party on his phone and I was just so annoyed. In a moment of frustration, I confronted him about it and he just started saying I was being dramatic and ruining our daughter's day. He was yelling and it was so embarrassing because people were staring at us. After the party, he just left and said he needed space. A few days later, we had a dinner scheduled with his parents. During the dinner, his mom casually asked when we were having kids, and I just felt so sick because I knew this was going to be a touchy subject. The boyfriend just made this vague comment about waiting, 
and it started another argument. I brought up all my concerns about us and our future, and he just deflected the conversation. I ended up leaving the dinner feeling so alone and frustrated. Later that night, he sent me a text saying we needed to talk. We met at this local diner, and the conversation just got heated so fast. He accused me of being unsupportive of his goals and aspirations. I mean, what the heck? This was about us and what we wanted, and he was acting like it was all about him. I told him he was dismissive of my feelings and opinions, and he just didn't get it. It's been pretty quiet since then. We've been communicating, but it's been minimal and just about the necessary stuff. I can feel us growing apart, and it's just sad. During a family gathering, my sister mentioned her engagement plans and it just hit me so hard. The boyfriend suggested that we take a break to think things through, and I agreed. We both realized we needed time apart to figure out what we wanted. I've been spending the past few weeks focusing on myself and my daughter, which has been nice. He didn't take the news of the break well at all. We had this final confrontation where we just let it all out. We ended up parting ways both of us uncertain about our futures. It's just been a lot to process and I'm trying to figure out what I want. Edit, I realize I didn't explain the timeline. We went to Europe in early September, got engaged on the 9th, came back on the 14th, had the birthday party on the 16th, and then had the dinner with his parents on the 17th. The breakup was on the 22nd. It's been a lot to deal with. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.